So a few people have been asking how we can update the look of our widgets from our CSound code. So we're used to our creating widgets, let's say, like for example, an image here in our cabbage code. The thing about creating widgets up here is we can define our widgets and we can create them up here. But once they're created, they're fixed. Their color, for example, will always be white. This is always going to say untitled. Uh, so it's kind of a little bit restricted. Now, we can, however, send information from CSound to our widgets using a identifier channel. Ident channel. I can't spell ident channel. It's not that difficult to spell, although it's not a word. Uh, right, so what we can do is we can send information from CSound to an ident channel, and then that's going to control the look of this particular widget. So let's do that. First, I'm going to just go into edit mode and add a button. So I'm going to, the button's going to trigger something to change. It should be easier to follow then. So we're going to be using some if statements. So if statements are kind of simple to follow. They say if a condition is true, execute a line of code, otherwise don't. So let me just grab the value of this button. And I'm going to say if changed kbut is equal to 1. Then the chained output is one that we use a lot with cabbage because we want to know if a widget is changed. Okay, so this will tell us as soon as somebody presses this button. The other thing we're going to want to know is if kbot is equal to 1, so if the button is on or if it's off. And now we can say if the button is on, we can send chance set. So a chance set sends a value followed by the channel name. Okay, in our case we're going to send a string. We're going to call a color and we're going to say 255 Zero, 0 for red and then we're going to send that to this widget on its identifier channel image and then I'm just going to create another one here with a different color and save right so every time I push this button so when the button is 1 we're going to send this identifier to this widget we know it's that widget because we have, this is the widget identifier channel and that's assigned there. Okay, so this stuff here is going to be sent to the widget. It's just like typing it here if you were to type color blah 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 over here. It would be the same thing except for when we do it from CSound we can do it dynamically. Okay, so we could also set the size for example if we wanted to do this. I don't know why we would but just for demonstration purposes, 300, 300. So and now we can change the size. So you can hide controls. You can make sliders bigger. You can, for example, if somebody selects an LFO, you can dynamically display the controls for that LFO, and you can hide them when they're not in use. Uh, you can also change the position of any of the widgets. So for example, I could do something silly like this. Change the size of this to 30 and 30. Okay, I've got an end if in there I don't need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just create pause y randi 201 and then k pause x randi 201. I'm just going to pass it to, so this is the amplitude, this is the frequency, and this is going to mean that we're going to seed the random numbers from the clock on the computer which is going to make it unique each time you run this. And I'm going to say, so I could do something like this, chance set, uh, I need to create a pause string, sprint fk, sprint kf, sprint fk, oh, sprint fk. So this is going to help me construct a string. So my string is going to look like this. And then I'm going to do k pos y and k pos x. So when CSound gets this line of code, it's going to replace 
the percentage sign D with the value of k plus y and the percentage sign D here with this value. Okay, so it's going to generate a new string use passing these values to it. And then I can do a chance set s pause image. Okay, so now we have that moving around the place. I would probably want to offset the values here. Okay, maybe that's a bit much, but yeah, so now we have a, a square moving around the screen. It's pretty visually stimulating, I have to say. Okay, one thing I should say here though is that you don't, you shouldn't really be updating this at every k cycle. This is updating quite a lot. We're sending a lot of uh, things might slow down a bit. If you were doing audio, you might be getting audio dropouts as well. So what I'd recommend is using the Metro opcode and putting the brakes on this update a bit. So what we're doing is we're saying if uh, Metro is a metronome and it takes a frequency and then it's going to output a one five times a second. So in between those ones it'll output zero. So we can test it here. So this it's going to cause the object to move a little bit more shakily. It won't be as smooth, but it's much more efficient and we won't get any audio dropouts. Um, cabbage in general isn't really, it's not some kind of animation package. So if you find yourself wanting to do stuff like this with cabbage, just try something else. Use processing or just write it in JavaScript or Java or something. I don't know. Don't use cabbage for it. I shouldn't even show you this. No. Why, why did I do that? Okay, anyway.